Anyways, I was going to hang out and sing Johnny Cash for these guys, but we are back live from MGM Pact here with Mita Unshackled, having another one of these wonderful conversations where we grab people from the floor and we get to know each other and you get to know them as I get to know them because we really don't, we know each other a little bit, yep. but we don't know each other at all. So you guys can get to know them as I get to know them. And this is what we've been doing for a decade in the cannabis industry. And Mita's now bringing it to you so you can sit in the comfort of your own home, network with them and do business with them later. But first, thanks to Pure 5. Jack Herrera, Cali FX for sponsoring Mita to make it possible so that the people out there in the world and the aliens who are intercepting our signals. <laughs> I watched Independence Day, even though I don't watch Will Smith movies anymore. I watched it and the aliens are intercepting our signals as we speak. And they're learning about you guys. There. So just you know, be, be careful out there. <laughs> uh, so anyways, let's get to let's get to Robert, Joe, and Adelia. And uh, you guys, let's start with the first Introduce yourself, talk about who you are and how you got to the cannabis industry, and then we'll talk about your business, what you do for the business, how great your business is, and what your business is doing next. So let's first talk about your past. Okay. Uh, Robert Caceres, I'm the Chief Risk, Chief Risk and Compliance Officer for Bancard International Group. Chief Risk and Compliance Officer. How did you get to that position? Um, well, I started in the cannabis industry back in uh, 2014, so I've been in the banking industry most, well, all my career. That's a long time. Long time. So, yes. um, and then I, I had... You got to get your mic a little closer. There was uh, financial institutions that I had been working with in right. states that had uh, legalized cannabis, and they're like, what do we do with this, right? Uh, it's, it's legal in our state, but it's illegal at the federal level. Well, all banks are federally regulated, and so, of course, they need to follow their guidelines as far as when it comes to uh, federal laws and regulations, and then, of course, everything revolves around compliance. So, compliance. Um, yep. So, I began to learn about the industry so I can then turn around and educate the financial institutions that were my clients at the time. And so, I met the folks from Bank Card international group at a fairly early time, so it was like 2014, 2015, and worked with them off and on. And two years ago, I was given the option to come on full-time as the Chief Risk and Compliance Officer, and here I am today. And now here you are. <clears throat> Biggest difference, the cannabis industry that I once knew, mis amigos and los cartels, they do not care about compliance. Exactly. And this do new not. world does. Yeah. So with much love to me. Paisanos, <laughs> things have changed. I I was on record in 2011, 12, 13, 14. I said, Chapo, any of you guys who you want to keep dealing marijuana, you call me because you need a lobbyist in the United States to stop the progress of legalization. Otherwise, the price of flour is going to drop so low in Mexico, you're not going to be able to do anything in, yeah. in Colombia, et cetera. And so they didn't. No one called me. They didn't hire any lobbyists. <laughs> You know, and they're not doing it in Mexico either. Mis big, big, big misconception what cartels are. We don't need to get into that. Let's talk about you, Joe. Joe, Zahidis. We've talked Joe, before. Joe is not a cartel member. <laughs> Anymore. Any Wait, that, we that we know of. That we know of. He, you've, seen, you've seen the movie Chapo. He would stand out. It's like, I can't He's tall. Um, yeah, Robert and I work together. I've been with the Bank Header National Group. We started back in 2008, 2009, back when it was truly the wild, wild west. And uh, we've been in the payment space. I've been in the payment space for 30 years. And uh, recently, a few years before Robert, but uh, my partner, Brett Taylor, reached out and said, I need you to come out of retirement, and I want you to run uh, kind of what we're doing in this new cannabis space with uh, legal, compliant, transparent processing. And we're going to set up a team and, you know, take this to town. I love it. I love it. Uh, so you came out of retirement. What were you doing while you were retired? What do, you, what do people do when they retire? I don't know. I didn't get to be retired for very long. Oh, Let's okay. That way. <laughs> no, I've been trying to figure that out. I'm, I decided know. I'm not going to. Brett and I have talked about it. I'm, I hear I've there's decided. a lot of golfing involved. Yeah, yeah, golfing. Golfing. It depends on where you're at. There's a lot Boating, of golfing. travel, that's, where, that's where mine yeah. will be. Okay. These philosophical questions, metaphysical questions. They, <laughs> they I'm not ready for that. Me. You want to talk about other stuff. I'm not no, ready for we'll, that. We'll, we can, we're going to talk about compliance. We're going to talk about your business. But if you guys want to get into some metaphysics and some weird abstract stuff, I'm down. <laughs> you know, and please feel free to use metaphors involving nature. Nice. Nice. Okay. On this show, metaphors involving nature take us a long way. And here I so, am. Yes, and you become my friend. And so you speak in terms of metaphors. Uh, Adelia. <laughs> yes. Cologne. 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 Cologne si. like. Si, si. Yes, I. But oh, sorry, before I talk, I gotta tell the story. I have a vision of being the Simon Bolivar or the Hernan Cortez of the metaverse. 
Nice. Right? Okay. And everybody can buy land in my new continent. And they can own Oompa Loompas, dwarves, elves, all oh, half part of that. Have you not right. played in Second Life? It's called Second Life. It's already out I, there. I, I, I haven't seen it. <laughs> I haven't seen it. It was a complete we train wreck, but Wait, it, it, it is out there. You can own Oompa Loompas in Second Life? You can own anything that you want. You, you, yeah. it's, you could buy land in, in Second Life. You can have your own block, your own town, your own island if you want. It's what, a Eric, where, what thing. happened? Where was I? I missed this. <laughs> you can't even launder money in Second Life. You, you can, can launder money oh, too? Wow. Is this like the metaverse, but Second Life? No, or? it's an old version of a metaverse, yeah. but, but it's out there. But the metaverse is like more alive than the Second Life, right? Second Life is like Dungeons and Dragons kind of stuff, right? It's mm. two-dimensional. It's more two-dimensional. Right, yeah. the metaverse. We've yeah. completely gone off topic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they not bringing back? Uh, Adelia, sorry, Adelia, yes. Adelia Cologne. Well, because it was Cologne and Simone Villabar, Hernan Cortez, Oompa Loompas, it all we together. We'll bring together. all that back, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like it. so yeah, let's talk about you. Yes, let's talk about me. Uh, Adelia Cologne, I am the Senior Cannabis Relationship Manager for Credit Union One. Um, I've actually been with Credit Union One for 18 years now. I started off, yes, thank you. Uh, I started as a teller and was able to move my way up um, in the ladder. And I'll just I'll just say this before you do. She started when she was four. Apparently, yeah, there wasn't any labor laws back there, and so. <laughs> That's good. That's my first memory me. was when I was four. The first three years, like it happened during like blackouts or something. I don't know. See, well, mine was two. I can actually remember. Really? Remember That's two. impressive. Because apparently, the brain doesn't start really no, developing I, the memories until I remember three. Remember a couple birthdays. Apparently, yeah. that's what well, I remember. Yeah. He's the one keeping us on track. He's that's the that's very true. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I just three years early. I'm like, I had to throw us off track once. He's, he probably remembers his own birth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was that like? <laughs> Some things you want to forget. Uh, yeah, true. <laughs> Sorry true. about that. No, you're good. That was probably too much of a metaphor. A little there. too much. We'll yes. cut that in post. <laughs> I blacked out during my birth. <laughs> yes, that was my first blackout. Never. <laughs> Sorry. I've had too much One coffee this morning. Yes. You know. Sorry, back to you. Yeah, back to me. Um, so, yeah, so started when I was four years old. And then, you know, 18 years later, <laughs> um, our CEO, um, actually, we were approached by the state of Illinois. Credit Union one was um, letting us know that it, you know cannabis was being recreationally recreationally uh, legalized and we wanted to be in the space. So our CEO came to me and said, "How do you feel about cannabis?" And you know I kind of looked around and was like, "Can I this, say right? Is this is this a trick? <laughs> Am, I Am I gonna get fired?" And he's like, "Look, I don't care what you do on your personal time." Is he trying but, to get me out back? <laughs> right, yeah, I, <laughs> right. I'm like. Mm, I it's just a trick question. I used that trick a couple times in college. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I said, well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a big advocate of, you know, cannabis industry and the medical benefits that it has on so many people. And he's like, great. You want to run our, um, our cannabis team? And I was like, I sure do. And here I am for five years later almost and um, just having a wonderful time. And I love the weed love shirt. Yes. I've, Branding yes. is everything. Yes, and this is actually patented by Credit Union One, so we you. love. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, so I mean, and I had a part obviously to do with this as well, so I'm very proud of. What's the concept behind Weed Love? Obviously, it's obviously Weed Love, but is there, is well, there something? Well, we 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 love people helping people, and okay. cannabis kind of just tied into it, so we kind of used the the playing with the word and said Weed Love, and then. Thank can we do a meet up, meet up love, Eric? Can we do that? Meet up? Meet up? <laughs> meet up? Meet up love? love. Yeah. Meet up with if, a big if heart. You, if you did it, it would have to be meet a love you long time. Meet a love, love you long time. <laughs> I like where you're going with that. I like that. I like yes. that too. I'm a full metal jacket guy myself. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> I see that. So tell us the differentiators between, Robert, between you and just tell me why you're better than your competitors. Well, as I mentioned earlier, um, when you look at what is considered a competition in this industry. Um, there's a lot of different solutions that exist out there that really are not, they don't revolve around compliance. And the conversations that we have with folks from the industry, whether they're the cannabis businesses or they're the financial institutions, um, it's really sharing with them and, and informing them of the different types of solutions or that exist in the industry. And if you're the business owner, you want to make sure that you have a solution that is truly compliant. Now, the word compliance gets thrown around this industry so much. Right. And so, um, so when we speak compliance, we actually back into it and explain why we are compliant. Wait, wait. I just need to say something for our, for our hosts here. Let's unpack that. 
I shall unpack. Yes. Um, so when we speak about oh. compliance in this industry. Well, let's unpack what compliance means in this industry. Yes. Yeah. Well, so that compliance is um, you know, <laughs> being transparent as far as what is the type of, of transaction that, that we're actually yeah. conducting, right? Um, how it originates, how it processes, and how it ends. Is it the same transaction or does it get converted to another form right. of payment, right? right? And in all transparency, is it showing the true uh, business name is that, that's associated with that transaction? Right. Uh, address, anything that's associated with that. So, um, so you are in compliance. You can go all the way through that transaction, and it shows who the merchant is and the name of the business and all that stuff on the receipt. The product. Correct. How yeah, it's correct. Coding, all right. those things are All of that stuff. And so that's where it's important. So if you don't have a solution that is not compliant, that it's actually taking several hops and it's changing the form of transaction, well, you're disguising the transaction, right? Right. And but then you have to ask you know, the question: Is why are you disguising the transaction? Right. Right. If the transaction is tr truly legitimate, and if it's truly compliant, you should not have to mask it right. at all. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's how I tried to explain uh, to folks how you know how a solution is truly compliant mm -hmm. and it's legit. And if you are that cannabis-related business, you. You're proud of your business. You want to stay open, so you want to make sure you're accepting true forms of payment that are going to keep you in compliance. Yeah. So, what well, we consider a long tail solution, from the perspective of, and again, we've we've been I've been in this space for quite some time. You have back in the day, OG World, OE, mm -hmm. and nine programs that would come up and go down within 30, 60, 90 day periods, where you'd have you know, you'd go. It was you know known miscoding of a merchant in, in the credit card world, and then all of a sudden the bank would shut it down. And it was unknown miscoding, and then Visa would find out and shut it down. Mm -hmm. And then so you, now you've got clients that are out there coming up, going down, coming up, going down. They're having challenges. Our goal has been to get into a solution that says, I want this to be as long tail as possible. I want to be able to say that today, tomorrow, next week, next week, next year, that these clients can be rely on the nature of this solution until we go mainstream, which everybody's waiting for. We're waiting for a credit card to become legit. Not going to happen, we don't think, anytime soon. No. But until it does, we want a solution that, to Robert's point, is something that we can hang our hat on as an industry and say, I am comfortable, confident, and I will give you my backing to say that we have done everything we can possibly do to say that this is good. My, my comment to always people is, how many hops does it take before the transaction is complete? It's more than one. How many what? Hops. Hops. You know, it goes from, it goes from a right. credit card to a gift card to a this to a to wallet a to a yeah. crypto overseas. And it's a, how many hops does it take? If he it's said really, hops. Well, <laughs> we can go for those hops later on, too. No, no, no. We were just at a place the other day that's, oh, well, that's a whole other thing. No, you said hops, which means bunnies. Uh, no, hops and bunnies. Means beer. He's going beer, which is that's I, I was, was going, going beer. Yeah. Sorry, and I love bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. If so it's many more than, than one, one. Yeah. Yeah. I would bring, me back, bring me back. Bring me more back. More than one bunny. I'm going down yeah. that more hole. Than, right. Sorry. Yeah. I'm going the down that mad hole. hatter hole. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you're saying hops, yeah. bunnies, mad hatter. I'm in. I'm in Wonderland right now. I like where love you it. take me. You, see, you I, throw out those metaphors and you make just, me happy. That's right. I keep you going. I am <laughs> like a <laughs> child like that. Okay, so go back to you. No, but that, and that's it. That's I mean, and from, from Robert's perspective, from a compliance perspective, it is something that's thrown around a lot. We kind of take our role, which is why we love being here, is trying to educate the industry. You know, you don't yeah. go with me, fine, don't go with me. I'm okay with that from a solution yeah. perspective. But at least know what you're, what getting, you're getting into, into before yeah. you get into it. And that's sure. why we love these guys because they're from a bank, from a FI perspective, because right. they're a credit union. They're looking at it as well and saying, okay, right. don't just tell me, show, show me. me. Yeah. yeah. And so I was going to ask you if you wanted to add something here mm -hmm. to this. Hold your thought because mm -hmm. I know you do. But I want to say if you're ever not happy being here anymore, come with me down there. <laughs> I was, I, actually, before she ahead. went there, I was going to go, I thought you were going to bring us back to bunnies right away, as I thought we were going to No, no, no. you said hops. <laughs> I love it. We had somebody, the ducks in the row thing really threw me off. Because I love it. ducks in the row. Use the metaphors. Why do we use them? So children understand. I'm like a child. Sorry, you were going to have no, a, a... Yeah, you're good. You're well, good. I, I wanted you to comment on what they were saying. Yeah, no, it's it's 100% accurate as what they're referring to. Obviously, um, cannabis is the most highly regulated um, industry by far out there. So the compliance uh, piece of it, the transparency, 
they go hand in hand. And as a financial institution with so many um, rules and regulations that we have to follow, so much due diligence that has to be done um, working or being able to work with folks like them that take compliance um, to that extra step, something that we don't have to necessarily worry about as a financial institution. It's just like music to our ears. So, yeah. So, I'm going to get reception. How are people receiving you guys? How's business going? Uh, and or horror stories or crazy stuff that you've experienced. <laughs> can I, can the I last do the horror stories two. one? Either, yeah. either, all three of you guys. Who wants to go first? Do you want to go first? Go ahead, the, yeah, um, tell us a crazy story. So we've all been in this industry for more than 20 minutes. So uh, last <laughs> Christmas, tail end of the year, there were some right. challenges in the space, if we all know. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and yeah. what, what surprised me in the context of that element and what happened, I expected there to be a higher focus from the industry dispensary specifically on compliance and some mm -hmm. of the other elements. What we found happened was it went back to the wild, wild west for a second. We now have more in a, what I would class as not necessarily appropriate solutions in the marketplace than we had prior to I that little that. Christmas issue that we had mm -hmm. where a couple networks got shut down. Mm -hmm. And that, that kind of surprises me that people came out of the woodwork, hey, we can do credit cards now. N no, yeah. you can't. Yeah. 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 And that's some of the clients are looking at it and coming back to us, our clients and saying, well, I'm being told right. this is OK. Yeah. And we hear it all the time as well on, on our end. Um, you know, someone has it figured out and we're like, no, no, they don't. They don't. Otherwise, Visa and MasterCard would be announcing it. Exactly. Oh, yeah. um, so, no, That'd the fact that somebody is telling you. There'd be an interchange you, rate for it yep, and there'd right. be a specific. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. None no. of that exists. Now, there's a bunch of countries, countries like Canada, Canada mm -hmm. that are federally legal. Yep. Yes. Are, are any do any of these countries have internal credit cards? When you say internal credit cards, like like credit cards that are nationalized credit cards that people can use. Yeah, Visa, Mastercard, American mm -hmm. Express. So they you can all... use Visa, Mastercard in Canada. Oh yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Visa USA is profiting from cannabis in Canada, but not in the United States. Correct. But the money's still coming back to Visa, the corporation in the United States. Got um, it. In, someone has been in the payment space, <laughs> you know, more than twenty minutes. <laughs> Yes, no. Right. Because we, <laughs> somebody, okay, so. Yeah. <laughs> yes, no. Yes, no. Right. Because, go yeah, go ahead. I can take you back on the rabbit hole. Visa <laughs> actually has multiple regions around the globe. Yeah. Yes. Each of the regions operates independently. Okay. They all operate under the single umbrella of the Visa brand. Right. But each region operates very, very independently as its own entity. But is it, so it's independently so, owned? Um, you could call it that. The board that represents that association group called Visa, right. is Canadian versus U.S. versus everything else. So it's it's not like it's, we, we myopically in the United States, I used to be this guy, we think Visa equals Visa equals the Visa you and I know. Okay. There's multiple Visas around the world. They all operate under the same umbrella, the same moniker, but they're all very, very different. Interesting. I'd like to know what region. exactly they do share. Because, I mean, that seems Marketing like... Marketing mostly. Yeah, that's a very interesting concept. We're gonna have a whole conversation about that. Let's not <laughs> let's not go down that rabbit hole right now. No, no, no. Well, that, that was just, yeah, that was me. That was me talking about that. And by the way, I like the the fact yes and no. That's very rabbit hole ish. Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, then we can do that. It's a, it's a Schrodinger's cat thing, is what it is. I well, love I think, this guy. I think cannabis this, is. All I was kind looking of a for one I could slip him. <laughs> no, 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 because yeah, because you brought up cats. I'm just kidding. I know. That's where I was going with that. Cats is so now we have rabbits, we have cats, we have ducks. Ducks. And ducks. And ducks and but ducks it's also a musical, and I like to sing. Oh, so. love it. How do people get a hold of you? Wow, look at the time. How, right. go. <laughs> How do people, obviously, you guys are absolute experts in your field, and you don't take yourself too seriously, which is good, but you're disciplined enough to bring things back on point. You guys would be fantastic people to do business with. How do people get a hold of you, and any closing thoughts? Closing thoughts. Um, oh, you don't have to go first. I mean, you have, you're ready to go. How do people get a hold of you? <laughs> um, we are Bankcard International Group. We have obviously a website. You can get a hold of us. Phone number. We're based out of Vancouver, Washington. Mm -hmm. I happen to be in Chicago, Illinois. This gentleman is in Billings, Montana. But so we're around the, the country. But we operate out of Vancouver, Washington. Easy enough to find. We're all on LinkedIn. Feel free to dial us up. Uh, we present at these all the time. We have a booth here. We'll be at MJ. No, 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 I won't mention another one because it's a whole other thing. But okay, um, well, this this one has no competition with their model. Yeah, but exactly. it does, but it doesn't. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here we go. Yes back. and no. It goes back. Yes and no. Oh, yeah. Yes yeah. and you, no. You know that dirty little story. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So there's another. We we and we and Robert and I speak at a lot of the regional shows as well. Yes. Nice. Yep. Um, and I won't mention them because we don't want unless they're going to have me speak. I'm not going to give them play. <laughs> 
It's that work. whole branding oh. thing. <laughs> yes, you should yeah. go back into retirement. Nothing <laughs> in life is free. Um, CreditUnionOne.org. Um, Adelia Colon. I am, again, one of the senior relationship managers for our cannabis uh, department. Um, just throwing out there, Credit Union One is nationwide, so we are able to bank in every state that has a legal program. So please, whether you're plant touching, non plant touching, please reach out to us. We would love to be your solution. Compare what you have today, and if we can save you guys money, that's what we're in this game to do. That's, that's absolutely fantastic. We got to come back to you. Closing thoughts. Uh, yeah, closing thoughts. Or um, yeah. for the industry, folks, um, the cannabis businesses, ask questions, please. Do your due diligence. Um, do it on us. Do it on everyone. Mm -hmm. And I understand that it's difficult by itself just running a business and getting something off the ground something that's your baby right so you got to be protective very protective exactly. yes. right exactly. and, yes. and confident in the solution that you're using for payments because you want to be in it for the long term yeah. so that's how we you know tried to convey that to the folks in the industry we work directly with financial institutions as well so we have partnerships with uh, with banks and credit unions across the country and that's a meaningful relationship to us. And that's, again, um, we share that with uh, the cannabis industry. And so that's, that's our interest. Yeah. But you guys are all sound pretty chilled individuals. So if you're out there watching at home, you can make one of these conferences, pick up the phone, get in your computer, reach out to them. They'll be glad to help you provide more expertise. Yeah. Yep. Uh, their companies as well, if they should not be there anymore. Maybe you go back into retirement one day. <laughs> I'm coming to joining you. You're too young. You and I, you and I are just going to do the whole circuit thing. We're going to go out there and love we'll it. play the metaphors. I thought I you were joining it. me in the, in the metaverse. <laughs> I'll join you in the metaverse, dude. Because <laughs> in my metaverse, you can own Oompa Loompas. I was going to say, are you going <laughs> like to own Like Willy Oompa Wonka. Loompa? Did they cancel Willy Wonka yet because he owned Oompa Loompas? <laughs> Here's my thinking on that. Okay. They're halflings. And there's no human rights associated with Oompa Loompas, elves, and dwarves They and have stuff. rights too, you know. Well, do they? They do. They I have They should. I, can, I need to see the statute on that. <laughs> okay, so I don't know any statutory rights for Oompa Loompas, dwarves, or halflings that give them the human rights status that we have. So 500 years from now, I'm like Demetri Downing, the Hernan Cortez of the metaverse. Uh, he's got. He wants me to wrap it up. Now I'll get you back on another. Uh, uh, I'll get you. I'll get this on another podcast. Show. We'll do this on a different, different podcast. show. We'll talk about Dimitri Downing's version by. of the metaverse. Maybe the but, psychedelic <laughs> show. <laughs> the I, after. It'll be the after hours. You know, right. the Dimitri the, after hours. Show. I am so. Except for the fact that I've had a lot of coffee this morning, I don't use any substances anymore. The cannabis industry nice. got me off alcohol in 2016. Good for them. And Absolutely. I am like yeah. substance free. And that's like my goal to live a substance free life. Good for you. Except for I use coffee as a drug, but that's another story. Yeah. We'll be back with another episode of Meat Unshackled. Thank you. Thank you guys. Okay.